Morning, Chief. Good um, morning, Jules. Uh, would you mind introducing yourself? I'm Joseph Pfeiffer. I'm the Chief of Counterterrorism for the New York City Fire Department. Okay. So what brings you to uh, Paris? I was invited by uh, General Gallet, who is hosting a conference this week on, on, on uh, what's the risk fire departments face and, and, and how do we manage crises. So uh, we spent some time yesterday talking about those subjects. Um, those subjects are very important for any fire brigade because we're the ones that's going to be in the middle of it. Um, whether it's a terrorist attack, whether it's a large fire, or a natural event. Um, fire brigades are the ones that are going to respond. And we're the ones that, that run into buildings and run into dangerous situations to, to save others. The topic was think differently. Uh, you have some experience with that. How does it link with you? Thinking differently is um, something we have to do now more than ever. It used to be very simple. We, uh, we put the, uh, the wet stuff on the red stuff, we put water on the fire, <laughs> and, and, and that's all we had to think about. But um, really, since 9-11, we had to think differently. And, um, and certainly, New York and Paris are um, bound by tragedy. The events of 9-11 and the, the events uh, of uh, 2015 in Paris, particularly the events of November 13th. So all this is um, kind of uh, links back to September 11. What, uh, for the, those who don't know, can you tell us the, uh, the events in your real role in it and your part in the fire department? On September 11th, I was the, uh, the first chief at the World Trade Center. And uh, matter of fact, that day, I saw the planes, the first plane, aim and crash into the North Tower. And I knew at that moment that this was no accident, that this was a, a terrorist attack. And I actually said that on the radio. And that day, firefighters um, knew what they were going to. As, they, as we called alarms after alarms, they, uh, they saw the flames coming from the top of the building. And they knew that uh, thousands of people were in their greatest moments of need. And they made personal decisions to go in. Um, they knew it was going to be a dangerous fire. Um, and yet, they came into the North Tower and they said, Chief, what do you want me to do? What people normally don't uh, realize is that uh, about 25,000 people were saved. That's the uh, always kind of something that was positive. But you, everyone who's seen the video, is always amazed that you're kind of cool under pressure. How did you, did you, was training part of it? Is uh, what made you go on and be able to give orders in the most stressful of all events? Well, training's part of it. But I could tell you, when you see a plane used as a weapon, um, your mind races very fast. So after giving my initial report on the radio, I remember sitting in the car as we were responding and saying, slow down. What do I need to do right now? I'm in charge. I know this is the biggest fire of my life um, and, and it's a terrorist event. What do I need to do? And then very deliberately I, I got on the radio and I gave a message that the plane was aiming for the building and then I asked for a, a second alarm assignment very specifically to go to the North Tower and a third alarm to stage out on, on the street. So it, it's that ability, whether you're a firefighter or you're a chief officer, when you see something very unusual and very dangerous, um, to take a moment and say, what do I need to do next? Okay. Um, that event changed the, the, your career. You kind of switched. You were battalion chief. How did, uh, where did you end up and, and what was the... Uh, the factors involved in that. Yeah, I, 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 um, I tell people that uh, I had a very, a very simple job. I um, went to work eight times a month, <laughs> doing 24 hours at a time. And um, all I had to do was worry about fires and medical emergencies. But since 9-11, my, my job has changed dramatically. Um, 
at being the chief of counterterrorism, I need to look at, at, at large-scale events. And, um, and we need to look at um, not events that just happen in New York or in the United States, but around the world, and, and particularly um, in Paris. So tell us this. You have a great friendship between the uh, New York Fire Department and uh, BSPP in, in France. Where did it originate uh, from? Tell us about your first trip where you connected with uh, General Gallet, General Boutineau at the time. Um, after the, uh, the attacks of November 13th, um, we knew this was a type of attack that all large cities had to, to look at. So um, I put a delegation together of, of four fire chiefs from around the United States, um, a medical doctor, and three Harvard professors, and some people from Homeland Security. And we came to the BSPP and, and, and General Boutineau and General Gallet, and I, I asked them, can you help us learn what you did that day and, and how you managed this, this very uh, dangerous and, and, and large event? And, and, and that's where the relationship started. Mm -hmm. And it has continued, that friendship and that relationship between the two departments has grown over the years. Do you want to talk about the things you've been working on together and the different trips that have taken place since then? Yeah, this wasn't just <coughs> a, a one-shot deal um, because we knew um, both departments have suffered so much from, from, from terrorist events that um, after coming here, we invited uh, um, um, uh, the uh, BSPP to New York, and we also invited the, the Barry. So, uh, because this combination of police and fire in a terrorist attack is, is really important. And they came to New York, and I had them brief our senior staff and, and our fire commissioner. We also invited NYPD to the, to, the, to, the, to the briefing. And what was really important for us was that we heard their narratives of what took place. Um, and um, I, I can remember General Gallet, uh, besides telling his story of, of, of uh, his role uh, during the events, he played a, a short tape from the BSPP, which was of firefighters. Responding, at, 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 like 9-11, like yeah. there was actual tape of firefighters responding um, to the cafes. And I heard their concerns on, on their voice, and then, then we watched them perform life-saving uh, first aid. And, and, and that, that was very moving. That, that The same as what we did on 9-11, firefighters running into the, the, the buildings, well, I saw on that tape firefighters running into the cafes and, 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 and rescuing people and, 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 and saving their lives. So the importance of the collaboration, what do you hope to achieve? What have you achieved already that, uh, between the BSPP and the FDNY? So it, it, you never think by, that you have an effect on other parts of the world um, and how they affect you. But by coming, by coming to Paris and then coming to New York, and we did it a number of times, um, we were able to, to work on how do we do a extraction uh, task force, or what we call in, in, in New York a, a, a rescue task force, which means a combination of, of uh, firefighters who have medical training and our, our medical personnel being protected by, by law enforcement. And we put a demonstration on in, in New York for, with FDNY and NYPD. Um, and from, from that, the conversation started to continue and to be more precise. How do we d do stuff in very dangerous situations that we normally don't do as a, as a fire department? Yeah. Um, and then, um, then as we had a conference here, it's about risk as well as how to manage the risk. So in, in May of last year, we had a conference in New York. And in the conference was about vertical terrorism, what we believe is going to be the next big attack. And vertical terrorism 
is a combination of what took place on 9-11 in a high-rise building and what took place in, in, in uh, Paris on November 13th. It's the combination of, of active shooter and uh, explosives and fire as a weapon. So we had a conference in New York. We had the, uh, of course, FDNY, NYPD, the FBI, um, medical doctors, because they're part of it, and building owners and, and managers. But that wasn't enough. We had to make this conference real. So I, I invited my friends from the BSPB and General Gallet and his senior staff, um, um, the, the Barry, um, and, and trauma center doctors that actually took care of patients. And this conference took place on the 63rd floor of the new World Trade Center. It was a moving moment to do it there. It, it was. <coughs> Since we are, you were taking care of not just terrorism, but you were there on the response for Sandy, do you want to tell us some stories of what, uh, what you learned or some of the things that were useful and the kind of uh, resourcefulness that firefighters everywhere uh, have to, to demonstrate? Yeah, I'm not sure why I'm the one that's always involved in these big events. <laughs> But um, I was the, uh, the, uh, the first chief at the scene for uh, Hurricane Sandy down Breezy Point. And Breezy Point was a, uh, we had a fire there that destroyed 150 homes. So w when I was at the scene, firefighters came in, came into the area, and you have to picture this. Everything's totally dark because there was no electricity that was knocked out by the storm. And the only thing you could see is orange. When, um, when they got there, there was something like 100 homes burning. And the firefighters came in, and they looked. And all they saw was orange. It literally looked like, like the whole world was on fire. And I gave one order to them. Um, and the order was, um, to help us out because we had hurricane force winds, 100 homes on fire, and no water pressure in the hydrants. And the one order I gave them was, find me water. And the firefighters looked at the area, saw the fire trucks in three feet of water from the, from the flooding, and they were able to draft water from the floods they were sitting in and provided water to, to extinguish the fires.